North Melbourne midfielder Will Phillips believes the injury struggles George Wardlaw, George Wardlaw, I beg your pardon, faced in the early stages of the season will help him throughout his career. Phillips himself missed the entirety of last season with glandular fever and says he's already become a stronger person because of it. He caught up with Kat Durkin, who started by asking if he's been surprised by how quickly this week's rising star in Wardlaw has taken to the AFL. I'm a little bit surprised because he, um, you, you look at him and you don't think, wow, this guy's just going to be a star because he's, you know, he's, he's, not, um, he's not a big body mid or anything, but he plays like it and um, he's so incredibly powerful. He'd be one of the most powerful boys at the club um, on the field. And, um, yeah, the way he just plays off instinct, um, it's just incredible, incredible to watch as a teammate um, and it just builds so much trust among us, us mids. Um, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing his development in the next few years. There was an element of delay for him as well. He had to hold himself back as he dealt with injuries uh, on his arrival to the club. Was there anything you could uh, lend him, I suppose, or any advice you could give him given your interruptions? Yeah, just to, to, to be patient, but um, really work hard and try to, try to um, you know, be the per best person you can be um, every day. Um, but he's also very young, so you know, he's going to have highs and lows like I have. Um, he's going to have periods of his, of his career where he, he might have injuries or illnesses or lack some form. But um, yeah, if he can just keep his, his natural instinct of winning the ball and having that hunger around the contest, then he's going to be a 300-game player. So as long as he maintains that, I think um, he'll, be, he'll be able to ride those lows and, and um, be a really good player for the North Melbourne Footy Club. You had glandular fever last year, so you didn't really get on the park at all. How frustrating was it uh, during that time? Yeah, it was uh, incredibly frustrating. I had, um, yeah, it was just so long, so much um, waiting around and being patient, um, figuring things out for myself, um, a lot of confusion going on in my mind, um, trying to blame things and search for answers. But um, I had some really good people around me, um, Daniel Cross, the rehab coach, and the the doctors in Kendall and Mark um, and the coaches are always really supportive and um, I've just been blessed with so many good people around me and, and that's helped me stay, um, keep my belief and um, maintain that going into the pre-season um, and then yeah I think that's filtered through into into the season as well which um, yeah it's taken me a bit to get going but I'm really grateful that now I'm kind of finding my groove, I think. Yeah, you've certainly started to click over the last couple of weeks. How did you find it, I suppose, round one when you were coming back to the top flight? It would have taken a little bit to, to remember what it was like to play AFL footy. Yeah, absolutely. I had to learn um, you know, the toughness of the game again. Um, I had to almost come back to my strengths and remember what it's like to, to play to my strengths, um, as well as um, you know, how tough the game is, how difficult it actually is and how regimented you need to be and disciplined you need to be in terms of your routine and your habits. And um, after a while, I think I, I got the hang of that. I've got the balance right now. And, um, and yeah, I'd, hopefully I can maintain that um, going into the back half of the year and, and going forward. It's early to know uh, what kind of impact, I suppose, missing chunks of footy will have on you and I suppose him as well later on in your career. But do you think dealing with adversity early in your career can really help you, I suppose, in your journey? Yeah, 100%. Uh, there's no doubt that where I am now, um, you know, these last three games, I wouldn't have um, figured out, you know, how to get that balance right if earlier in the year I hadn't just battled with that energy that I've, um, and that, I suppose, those fitness levels that I haven't been able to get up to the right level um, in the last few years given the lack of continuity but um, yeah, I'm at a point now where I just reflect on those hardships and the f you know I guess you call them failures as well if you want um, and I'm just so grateful for them and, and I'm going to keep putting myself in those situations to fail or to, um, to experience um, the lows potentially but um, yeah, I know that they're going to hold me in good stead for the future. You're part of a midfield group now that's really the talk of the town in terms of how young you are compared to what you're actually producing uh, on the park. How does it feel, I suppose, being the next generation here at the Roos at the moment? Yeah, it's so exciting. And, um, you know, I kind of knew that I was a part of a young group when I got to the club a few years ago. But um, as, we, as we're all kind of improving and... You know, guys like Jai and LDU and Sylvie Nicolaki are, are all getting older um, and they're kind of 
getting into their prime years. We've got another crop of boys coming through, like myself and um, Georgie and, and Shees, as you've seen, as you've seen in uh, previous, week, um, previous weeks in, in the midfield, but also you know guys around us um, who are playing not so much in the midfield, like Powley and um, you know Blake Drury's played a few games. Like that young crop um, are just complementing that middle age group really nicely. And um, yeah, I'm so excited about what's to come for the club. Um, and, you know, at a at a coaching level, we've got the right people in place as well, um, as well as you know, Jem Watt and Sonia um, um, above them. So yeah, it just it just feels like it's all coming together, and it's it's um, it's only a matter of time before we start getting some more wins. Thanks to Will and.